Hi there, I'm Angela Brown and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question and I get to help you find an answer. Now today's question comes from a woman whose mother just passed away and she lives in a very small apartment. Her mother lived in a house and she's trying to figure out how do I bring all my mother's stuff from her house into my tiny apartment? There's just no room and I don't want to dishonor my mother by not bringing home all of her things. What am I supposed to do? All right, that is an excellent question. And it comes down to what we call grief hoarding. Now, grief hoarding is the concept where when someone we love that we are emotionally attached to and we have feelings for, they pass away and we hoard all of their stuff as if us hanging onto their belongings stretches our memories and our good feelings for that person. The truth of the matter is that the feelings that we have towards that person are towards that person. It's not towards their stuff. And it's easy to assume this was really important to my mother. Therefore, it must be really important to me. And you want to honor that memory by holding on to it very dearly. Now, before we go any further, let me tell you about the frogs. Right after I got married as a wedding present, one of my husband's sisters gave us a frog. Don't ask me why. I have no idea what the meaning was, but it was about a two and a half foot statue of a frog reading a book. That's kind of cute. It was made of ceramic and copper and it looked like it was a really expensive statue. Now, Psychology 101 tells us that the behavior we reward is the behavior that will be repeated. And I was not paying attention. And when I received this frog, I was so dumbfounded by the frog that I gave it a lot of attention. I was like, oh my goodness, look at this frog. Wow, this is so amazing. It's cute, yada, yada. And then I put it on the centerpiece of my fireplace, right there at the base of my fireplace, so that every time his sister would come over, she would see this frog and she would know that I appreciated her gesture. All right, well, what happened was because I rewarded that behavior, then the next birthday and the next Christmas, and every time there was to be a gift exchange, She would bring me another next best frog. And then all the family members started jumping in on this thinking, well, she must love frogs. And so before I knew it, I had all kinds of frog statues. I had glass ceramic frog figurines. I had frog dishes. I had calendars, daily calendars with frog pictures on them. I had all kinds of frog statues that were out in my garden and my yard. And everybody, neighbors, friends, family, relatives, people that came to visit would say, Wow, I did not know that Angela collected frogs. Wow, we've learned something new about Angela. And then they would bring and gift me frogs. The truth of the matter is I didn't have anything to do with the frogs. I never wanted the frogs in the first place. They were nice, but I didn't have any emotional attachment whatsoever to the frogs. They were just frogs. They were gifts people gave me and I was trying to be polite. But the fact of the matter is if you would have asked me, do you want more frogs? I would have said no frogs, not more frogs. For me, this is just other things I have to dust and keep up with and store, right? (laughs) I don't want any frogs. And when I sold my house, I actually sold all the frogs with the house. And I told the lady that bought the house, you know, these frogs will bring you good luck. I'm going to let all the frogs stay with the house. Breaks my heart, but they're yours now. And I gave her all the frogs, right? I don't want any more frogs. And then I send a memo to all the family members and said, hey guys, no more frogs right? The truth is I never wanted the frogs. But the reason I tell you the story about the frogs is this. If you flash froze that moment in time, if I had died and my family that lives 2,500 miles away came to visit and they saw my entire house full of frogs, they would have said, wow, we didn't know this about Angela. Wow, we've learned something new. Frogs were really important to Angela. And so in order to honor that memory of me, they would have drop shipped all these frogs back to Oregon. All right, well, guess what? I never, I never liked the frogs in the first place. That would have been a really costly mistake. So there are people in our lives that we love, that we want to pay honor to, but maybe the stuff that we are hoarding after they've died is stuff they didn't want at all, right? I found out later that my grandmother who collected thousands of these little glass figurines, she didn't ever want them either. Somebody had given them to her and then other family members seeing that she collected them and she displayed them in a lovely china cabinet. Everybody kept buying her these little figurines. They didn't mean anything to her either. She never wanted them. Yet there we were trying to save them and dust them and take care of them because we thought they meant something to grandma. 
Truth of the matter is this, your memories are with the person, not with their stuff. And it's going to take some time to grieve. And so if you're going through the grieving process and you feel that you need to hold on to that stuff in order that will stretch the memory of your mother a little bit longer, then here's my suggestion to you. Pick three items, three items that you want to bring home to your house that are a good representation of the memories you shared with your mother. It could have been something like you were in the kitchen when mother was, when you were growing up and mother was always baking and she always wore for 20 years, this particular apron. All right. So that would be an item that you both shared. You both have sentimental value to that apron. So bring the apron home, pick three items that you want that means something to you as well as something to your mother so that you have something to share and then take all the rest of mom's stuff and put it in a storage unit and pay a couple of hundred dollars a month and store the stuff in the storage unit, not at your house. Okay. You're storing your own memories at your house. Then put it on your calendar once a week, block out a two hour window and go over to the storage unit and visit mom's stuff, touch the stuff, smell the stuff, hold on to it and remember the memories that you had with your mom. Go through all the items in the storage unit and spend time enjoying those items at the storage unit. And what will happen is you will get to a point where you'll say, well, I don't even know why there's this vase. I think like 13 or 14 years ago, dad gave mom some flowers for Valentine's day. And this was the vase. And you'll realize that maybe that vase didn't have any significance to her at all. It was the love from her husband on Valentine's day that meant something to her, not this glass vase. And then you can part with the vase. And as you are done with items that are in the storage unit, then you can get rid of those items. And the day may come where you realize, wait a second, I'm spending a couple hundred bucks a month and two hours of my week, every single week with stuff that no longer belongs to my mom. And the memories of my mom will live forever, but this is just stuff. And then you will be free to let it go. It may be that you visit mom's stuff in the storage unit every week for 20 years. That's fine, but it's not in your space. It's not consuming your life. It's a compartmentalized grief period where you're honoring your mother during that time. So grief hoarding is where you do bring everything home to your house and it takes up all this space in your own personal life. And now you're trying to live someone else's life in the reality of what is your own. That is grief hoarding. And it becomes obnoxious because you get resentful for storing all this extra stuff and you don't have space and you don't know where anything goes and you don't know what value it brought to your mom. If you have an entire apartment full of frogs, but you have no idea what the importance of those frogs are to your mother, then what it comes down to is you are hoarding stuff that was never important to her at all. And so the grief hoarding is because we care. We want to care about this stuff and it's not about the stuff at all. All right. I hope that helps just in the understanding a little bit about what grief hoarding is. And therefore you can make a choice in how you're going to deal with your mother's stuff. Anyway, I'm very sorry that your mother died. I it's heartbreaking. And I hope that this is an easy transition for you to work through. All righty. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Thank you.